All right, so we are officially T minus five school days, including today, away from midterms. Um, and I will be talking to several of you about work. I have my list of people that are close to failing. Um, I have looked at the midpoint, uh, sorry, the midterm point system. It is definitely 14% of your grade, okay? Um, and I have adjusted that for honors versus prep, okay? 14% uh, looks a little bit different for a prep because you just had less assignments, right? Um, so yesterday for 2023, we had our class canceled because of rain. Um, and this is totally AP, not co-seeded. I apologize. Let's see, co-seeded spring. Um, so class is canceled. And I made a Canvas announcement about a ton of things you could be doing during that day because uh it was a really good catch-up day it would have it was a really good catch-up day for a lot of you guys if you used it okay and then what we're going to do today is test our polymer labs out so that was supposed to be yesterday but because we didn't we're going to do it today and it's your first project work day once you finish testing okay and testing might actually take the whole day though so what really is going to happen is you've lost the project work day I can't give you the same amount of time. We've that school day that got canceled took from our days, okay? So what we have is two days to work on the project fully dedicated to it, Thursday and Friday. Now, um, honors, you should be looking ahead to your Friday ideal gas law quiz. If you are not gonna be here Friday, which I also will not be here Friday, okay? And I've already made the sub plans, they're ready to go. You need to take the gas law quiz sometime either after school today or sometime tomorrow before your absence on Friday, if you are someone that's absent. Also keep in mind that Friday marks the end of all new content and unit four content. So all unit three material is due, okay? And the midterm is coming up, which means I can, I actually have already printed the midterm packet if you'd like to start early, especially if you know you're gonna be absent, okay? Um, but the following week, okay, is our last week of the term, okay? Which means we're halfway through. You will get two study days to next week, Monday, Tuesday. I've checked the midterm. The answer key should be, I think, correct. I think we've corrected everything, but let me know if we haven't. And um, then you have midterm Wednesday and Thursday, 14% of your grade. On Thursday of next week, what's up? On Thursday of next week, all unit four work is due, okay? Um, because I am not going to accept any late work after Thursday night. Like, bummer. If you turn it in Friday morning, that sucks. Okay? Because I need to move on. I need to close this up and move on. Um, I will be sending out an email, though, on a little bit more of a joyous note, not as tense, um, about half-day celebration, about having uh, families volunteer to contribute food, okay? And games. If you have board games, I'll bring some board games from home, too. Please keep it appropriate. A lot of people bring like board, like games like Cards Against Humanity. It's a little sketchy to have all of you in a circle looking at those cards, okay? So I really prefer you not bring Cards Against Humanity because I know that is like the first thing that people want to bring, okay? Um, and uh, doing a little bit of cleaning for that hour. But just so everybody knows, that's the trajectory that we're on. Are there any questions about overall trajectory for closing out the term? I will be talking to people individually about work and accommodations. Yes. Uh, they're just right over here. I'll put them out in a second after testing. All right. All right. So let's move on now to um, our lab and our project. Let me give you some details about project overview, and then I'll tell you the instructions of how to do the lab, and you guys are going to pretty much self-govern. Okay. So um, let me screen share. Come on, come on, switch, switch. There we go. Okay, so if you look in your uh, packet, if you look in your packet, here is the task of the overall project. I'll go through the testing in a second. Go to page six, okay? So you created bioplastics, plastics, alternative plastics made out of natural organic biodegradable material, potato starch, uh, gelatin, which is an extract of collagen, which a lot of us use for 
skin and beauty. Okay. Collagen, hair, nails, growth, skin. Well, my, my, my Korean friend always goes, you want to have pushy skin. You're like it bounces. Okay. Um, and then glycerin for some versions of each, right? Cause glycerin, glycerin was a plasticizer as given in the intro. Okay. Glycerin is a plasticizer. It has additional hydrogen bonding, which means it makes the material stronger less resistant to breaking apart, okay? Which can sometimes translate to more flexibility to give us a, the different quality of plastic vibe that we want, the options we want. So what you're going to do is in groups of two to three people, okay? Or unless you have talked to me beforehand about being individual because of absences, okay? You are in a group of two to three. You do not want to do this project alone, okay? You are going to try to get a wealthy investor, a me. I am wealthy compared to you, Okay. Um, to fund your bioplastics, either gelatin or starch. I would personally pick one bioplastic to focus on. I wouldn't try to be like, you should use gelatin and glycerin, including, and starch and starch, including. I'd get a niche, right? Part of the strength of being a business person is you find the niche in the world that hasn't been met and you need it and you excel in it and you make money, okay? So pick one particular plastic that you hope to replace. Like I hope to replace with my starch plastics milk cartons, make a video on that, make an advertisement on that, make a brochure on that. Um, because if you try to hit up all four plastics, you're just gonna, it's gonna get too clouded. It's like, it's kind of like Walmart, Walgreens. You're like, what Walmart and Walgreens, like, what is it actually? It's just like a big warehouse of extra. Eh, get focused, okay? And choose one specific application of plastic, milk cartons, plastic wrap, chip packages, etc. Okay, and create a video or brochure that convinces me to switch from using traditional plastics to your bioplastic. Again, either starch or gelatin and either version one or version two. Maybe you don't want a milk carton that is rigid. I don't know why, okay, but maybe you don't. You wanna say, I want a milk carton that's a little flexible so I can also have my kids use it as a hacky sack. I don't know. You might do starch two, version two with, gel uh, with uh, glycerin, okay? Um, you must cite evidence from each testing station that you're going to be doing today. So that includes the four testing stations of observation, flexibility, and melting point. And you must identify the IMFs present in your particular plastic sample. So that would be where the background would come in. This is where your background would come in, right here, pages one and two. This is where you go for background and notes, okay? and describe how IMF explained the property. So connect, right? You're gonna connect your testing data to your background and notes knowledge. Okay, head up, Lachlan. Um, so you will also need to ad discuss additional factors of sustainability and cost. Cause if I'm a business person and your pitch is that you're biodegradable and that you can still make me money, I want to know if that's true. So to do that, you're going to have a short article that you're going to read below. Okay. And then I give you guys Venn diagrams and tables to help you organize your information. You don't have to use these. They're just helpful. Okay. But you do need to read this article and use some of these facts. You also probably should do your own research, right? If you choose milk cartons, investigate milk carton costs in industry, right? Um, it has to be about a two to three minute advertisement video. It can be longer or a one to two page brochure with illustrations. If your brochure looks super sparse, like a third grader did it, I will give you the F because you are better than that. Your brochure should be pretty well packed with information, but not overwhelming like a kid puking out information either. It needs to be selective, discerning, informative, and accurate. And attractive. Don't give me an ugly brochure with like red and orange and green. Like, ugh. okay, don't do that. Get someone with a good color palette or look up a good color palette and like use that. Okay. Um, just so you know, bioplastics are not better in every single way of business argument. So you're going to have to make a case. Why do these strengths, these pros outweigh the cons? You need to recognize that. Okay, because it's a convincing, you're actually arguing with your data that this is worth the investment. Your plastic, your bioplastic is worth the investment, is worth the switch. So um, 
The rubric is here below, all right? You want to shoot for a four because the reality is if you shoot for a four, you're probably going to have elements of a three, right? In terms of, right, shoot really high knowing that you're probably going to fall a little bit, okay? Um, my biggest thing is that I need you guys to give me a self-score at the end. This could be done in comments or uploaded as like a screenshot when you submit, okay? Um, but I want to see your self-score. I also want to make sure that you guys tell me your group member names, like tell me who you worked with. It should be part of the video or the brochure. So it should be easy to find, but just in case, tell me. And if there's any unequal level of work, whether it's because your partner having a bad week, whether it's because your partner um, just doesn't understand, whether it's because, because you don't trust your partner, let's be real. Sometimes we just don't trust the people we work with. So we're like, we'll take over. Okay. I need to know if there's an unequal amount of work because I will grade accordingly. And that's not me. That's just reality. You should not want to give people credit where credit is not due. There's a time and a place for giving grace. This is not one of those. Okay. So, um, but I give kind of categorize you. This is worth eight points. It's cumulative. It's four for this category and four for this category. And then I will also consider your self-score as a, like 10, 15% of that grade, okay? Um, are there any questions on expectations for the project? If you're gonna wanna look at that rubric more closely. Any expectations though? Think about Shark Tank. How many of you guys have watched Shark Tank before? Yeah, I am Mr. Wonderful, okay? So think about that. Mm. Okay, so today, what are you gonna do? You are going to test out your polymers. So I have stations where I'm doing eight station cycles where I have like four and then four, right? And you cycle within those four. You guys familiar with that setup? You should be quite familiar with how my stations work. The first station is observable properties. Just describe the darn thing, right? This is what we call qualitative information. Collect your qualitative data. Like what, your plastic's hard. Is it crunchy? If you throw it down, does it break, right? Um, that is like gonna take two minutes for you to do. Station B has been turned into two. It's been split into 2B and 2A because at one station, you're gonna test the melting point of glycerin, version one and version two. And at another station, you're gonna test the melting point of starch, version one and version two. Melting is really messy because some of these just don't melt. Some of them don't ever create a drop of liquid, they just burn. So notice that you might, when you do your advertisement, you might have to do a burn scale instead of a melting scale. Maybe it's not, hey, and my plastic doesn't melt in hot heat, but hey, forewarning, if left in high heat, it could burn. So don't leave it exposed to high temperatures, right? Like that might be a consideration. Like maybe your plastic is not used as a hot chocolate cup holder. Maybe it's used for cold items, right? So be keep this in mind, right? You're using all of your data to make a cohesive argument and business proposal. Okay. Um, and if you, by the way, you burn this, it's a mess to clean up. So have fun scraping. Um, if you need soap, we have soap in the back. But um, your goal is to get a drop of liquid. That's the melting point. But if you start burning and smoking, just make a note of that. It's not going to melt after it starts burning. Like it's just, it's not going to melt. Turn it off, clean it up, throw it away. You have pre-cut ch sample chunks because I don't want you using more than one small chunk for those melting stations, because I want you to have plastics to use for your videos, okay? Um, flexibility and elasticity are stations, one's here and one's over there. Is it break, does it break? How much does it break? Does it stretch? Basic things like that, okay? Um, and that is your testing stations. So does anyone have any questions about what I want you to test or how it works? There's also instructions at each station. Anyone unclear? Okay. Well, let's begin the work. All right, guys, one last tip is after you've collected all of your data that you should now have for your respective um, plastic that you're going to feature is that a lot of times when you're creating your brochure or your argument that you're going to want to say, make absolute claims like our plastic never melts. No, that's not the case because you did one test. Like all of your data is based off of one sample round. So what you're going to want to say as a, business person is you're going to say in our initial testing or our 
preliminary testing, we had the promising results or we had these results or we observed these results, which show us that there's a potential for this or what show us that we could probably assume this or we can be somewhat confident that this is true. OK, so be careful that even a business person can't necessarily lie about data. They can kind of tilt it in a way that makes it favorable and highlights what you want to highlight and downgrade what you want to downgrade, but you can't lie about the data. There's actually a huge crime against that. I totally forget what the term is, but it's like hyperbole for business. So you want to make sure you don't do that. All right, guys, good luck. Bye.